think that people understand how big a priority it is for women to be protected. Like our, our society has just like started saying to women, you don't want to be protected. You don't want anyone to open the door for you. You don't want chivalry. You, and like all these, Essentially, men are telling us that we don't want these things anymore. You don't need protection. You don't need a man. Come on, you're a woman. Here, let's hear you roar. Burn your bras. I know. Everyone's like, you know, making us courageous. Like, literally every women's conference is like some kind of like warrior princess warrior with like a, a sword. Woman. And I get it. Like, I love tough women. And I've, you know, I'm pretty independent by nature. But I, I mean, I think everyone needs a man at some point. I We've needed... I mean, like our families needed another man that had a like, higher yeah, level of ability to protect. I am a man, and I've needed like trained uh, men that that are killers to yeah. protect me before, right? And, and I mean, to think like everybody that, needs some help. Yeah, and I think love should include protection from both sides. Women can protect reputation, and they can protect their children, and they can protect you know a lot of things. Finances. Well, well, wait and, a minute. Let's face it. Wives often protect husbands from themselves. One. Hundred percent. Because a lot of men's nature in their fallen state, unredeemed and unrenewed, will be self destruction. Yeah. Right. Like well, it's proven that overeating, booze, smoking, you, you name it. Yeah. Statistically, married men live longer. And I, as I like, haven't read all the studies, but if I had to put like my guess on it, I'm going to go with like they just made them go to the doctor. Oh, well, because no. like, who goes to a checkup if your if your wife doesn't make you like men just will like you know let their heart yeah, it's explode. like yeah my chest is really hurting <laughs> and my shoulder hurts my jaw hurts I have these feelings of impending doom yeah it's I, weird I'll be okay so strange just shake it off but I know? think I'll take just some, go to the golf course take, take I'll be some fine deep breaths I got a golf match this afternoon I'll be good yeah women so, make you go and you and you live I'm 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 positive. That I wouldn't be alive today if I hadn't married you. <laughs> and so is the rest of the world. <laughs> <laughs> that makes multiple. No, it's true. But, you know, like, I, I am so grateful for the way that you have been protective of me. I didn't have brothers, you know, so I didn't really understand that world so much. I was kind of very protective of my sisters because I, I was that kind of person. I'm just loyal and protective. But I didn't have brothers, so I had never really experienced a lot of that until I experienced it in you. And at first, it felt very like, whoa, that was out of nowhere, you know? And now, like, I expect it. It's coming, you know? Which is funny. We were um, talking about how we were in the airport one day. And do you remember we were in the St. Louis airport? Oh, I remember this. Who could forget this? (laughs) And I'm just walking down, which Brian's always in a hurry everywhere. Like he's always pacing. He's always going like, I can sit, I can be happy. I can watch a movie. I can read a book. Like I can stare. I I, I'm fine, but he just like needs to be pacing all the time. And I remember your dad before he passed away, whenever I was really young, I would sit down on the couch beside him and he would say, look at him, look at him walk around. Like he's getting something done, but he's not doing anything. (laughs) Dad hated he would that talk I about it. Uh, uh, restlessness, right? Yeah. Uh, me and my mother are like that way. My dad's yeah. totally was I, totally the opposite. I'm a very content person, but like you're restless all the time. So uh, I remember I was walking down the airport, um, and we're always in the airport, and everything's kind of like a normal, natural process for us because we've just flown and traveled so much throughout our life. And um, I, Brian's always rushing and going in the front, and I'm just like coming at my own pace. We weren't in a hurry. We weren't late for anything. And I remember this man came out of nowhere, and he came right up to my neck and he just like pushed his body onto my body and then he like sniffed my what, neck was his name uh joe <laughs> by any, any i think i was already too was old for name? joe was his name joe i think it was too old oh, for yeah, joe that's right you were you were on i was 20s. like in my 20s but anyway he uh He sniffed my neck, and then he goes, you smell amazing. Can you tell me what perfume that is? And I was trying to say, like, oh, my. Immediately, because we'd been married for long enough, I knew what was coming. Like, you were so far ahead of me, but I knew, like, oh. I wanted to say to him in slow motion, like, run. Because I I knew you were going to figure it out. And apparently, I answered him in a very high-pitched voice because it caught your attention. And Brian turns around, and he's like, I just remember it being like, it's in slow motion. He's like well, I running. I heard your voice. I could tell you're in trouble. Your voice made that noise. I was scared. He scared me. Yeah. He startled me. And then Brian turns around and I looked at the guy and he looked at me. And Brian like gets down like he's running the football down the field or so. Like he is going to knock this guy out. He like lowers his head, lowers his body. I was body. tackling him. He's coming. And I'm like. 
oh, I just remember letting out this like, oh, and the guy goes, ah, and he just turns around and he runs through this door on the side that only employees can go through. The so apparently guy he was an employee. An employee he was an employee. At the airport, and walking up and sniffing random women like a big nasty bird. Yes. And, and you were like, I was going you were to like, into it. All I remember is hearing you say, that's my wife. And he ran through the door on the side. And then I just stood there kind of like in shock. And all of a sudden, all these claps, cheers, People and they were saying, go get them. Cheering. They were so appreciative of someone that would protect yeah, it's their like, person. It's like they broke out in applause because I was going to attack uh, a pervert in the St. Louis airport. They were shocked, startled, and so excited that someone was actually willing to go after someone and to do their job. I think that's every normal man in America 20 or 30 years ago. You yeah. did that to his wife. But anymore, if you do that, you're like way overboard and you're too masculine and you're toxic. You're and toxic. All the things. No, that guy just sniffed my neck. Get in the game, dude. Like, I, if you're going to say that you're a husband, get in the game. This is your girl. Like, you don't let some random person pervert come up and sniff your yeah, people it's it's uh we've been talking about this a lot and i've been preaching about this a lot because america's missing this and they have uh they're on a mission to effeminize men in america yeah the mission's here uh because they don't want people protected if somebody has no protection you can have your way with the culture with the people with whatever you want to do yeah uh you can own and rule uh but the bible says that adam right, was uh, pulled out of the dirt of the ground. God blew into him the breath of life. Adam becomes a living being. That word, God made Adam, means he roughed Adam out. Yeah. Right? Whenever God makes Eve, she is, it's a different Finally word. Finally handcrafted. Finally handcrafted. So uh, it's almost like you got something very special, mm -hmm. something beautiful, right? Something made with great value. And then you have something to create, created that's rough to protect it. And something worth protecting. Something worth protecting. The, the, here's the thing young guys need to know, uh, and old guys need to know. Man who finds a wife, he finds a good thing, a finely handcrafted thing. And with her, the, there's favor from the Lord. Yeah. So you got to protect that. you got to cherish that. you got to hold on to it. And uh, it's worth, I remember when I was running at that guy in St. Louis, I was mad Listen, Jesse's my best friend. I, I, I love her more than anybody on the planet. We've been together since we were practically kids, right? <laughs> we uh, say we got married when we were 12, but we were really we were 19 old enough. and 22, but we'd been best friends since for I was two 17. Years since then. Yeah. And uh, kind of grew up together. So it's like, yeah, I'm protecting her. She, she's the best thing on earth for me. And uh, if I got to go to jail in St. Louis, I'll go to jail in St. <laughs> Louis. But I'm running at him. And I remember who's going to, I remember thinking, who's going to get me out of jail in St. <laughs> Louis? And I'm like, Bob Mannion will come and get me. I remember having yeah, these yeah, thoughts. Yeah. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Pastor David Crank, I preached for him in St. Louis. He yeah. can get me bailed out. Yeah, right? you were thinking. And, and would, all I was thinking was, oh my gosh, Brian is going to murder this man. There's nowhere for him to go. And my thoughts, funny enough, automatically we, I knew you would come before I ever saw you coming and I knew he was going to regret sniffing me and immediately my thought went to oh this poor poor man what's about to happen to him and I think that that you know God created us to 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 love and to protect in a way that we build rapport with one another and there's no doubt because that keeps you out of a lot of arguments right there just knowing like their, my best interest is there in their heart. And I know because of past performance and I have trust because of past situations that no matter where I am, what kind of trouble I'm in, no matter what happens, that this person is coming to my aid. Then when you're in a room kind of, you know, hashing it out, hashing life out, you're not thinking like he's out to get me or he's against me. I'm thinking Brian loves me more than anyone. He's on my side every time. So if he's telling me that this is an issue, I should probably stop and consider like my attitude or, you know, whatever it is that we're dealing with that day. You know, I mean, I know that there's I'm other types of protection, not just physical protection, right? It's like Absolutely. protecting. We, we help each other uh, in this sense. We, Reputationally. We protect each other from our own weaknesses. Absolutely. And when we're weak, it's like, hey, why are you, you need to calm down. And How I, many times have we said that? You <laughs> to need, each other. You need, you need to, to calm, calm down. down. Give it a second. Take a breath. Take some breath. Calm down. It's, it's your, your hormonal. You're tired. You're sleepy. Yeah. You know, nobody wants to hear that in the moment, but no. we're 23 years in. 
And most of the time, we know the other one's telling us. And the we truth. and we we exchange the favor with each other. It's not like one person's getting picked on and no, the other no, no, one's no. always the judge. It's like, no, We're I love you. Equally insane at times. I, I love you enough to say to you, hey, these people, this is going to hurt them, and these are people that we want to be in relationship with, so please do not wreck a relationship with people that we want to be in relationship with because you're having a bad day. Like, I want you to look in my eyes like, I love you. I care for you. You are important to me. Our life is important to me. Us being able to get our uh, family through times of, uh, you know, intense times, it's important to me. Important enough that I'm willing to say to you, hey, I'm on your side, and today being on your side means I'm going to save you from yourself. Yeah, it's like you're wrong today. Yeah, and, 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 and that's okay. No, it's, it's, it's part of a healthy relationship and a long-term marriage. And, and I'll say this, I feel, so, I feel sorry and I pray for. Uh, there are so many people that are on second marriages, third marriages. Yeah. I mean, we've been, we grew up together. So we know, like, we, we communicate telepathically now. Uh, we had a vow, like a like a giving vow, like we're going to do this the much whole for church the church. was giving on this big church project we were all doing yeah, together. Yeah, it's, it's our main His Honor offering. We do it once a year. And so we were all like, you know, prepared. And Brian and I, we'd been really busy. We'd been traveling. We hadn't had time to talk about it. And he like looked at me across the stage. He nodded his head. I knew the number he was thinking. I nodded back. Yeah, and like, we pledged it on paper before the Lord without ever exchanging a word this year. I was like, never verbally communicated at all. We we're just, getting creepy. We looked at each other and knew what the number was we were going to give <laughs> to true. this project together as a family because we agree on that stuff as a family. And we just nodded, and yeah. both of us knew what it was. And we got after service, and you're like, what's the number? And she knew the number. We, we just knew it. It was uh, funny. Yeah. But, but a lot of these people were on second marriages, some of them third marriages. Yeah. Uh, and they're, they're, they're doing the best they can with what they have today. Absolutely. But you and doing them. a fantastic job. I mean, people start working really hard, you know, trying to, trying to make this one work. Yeah. Because people do want to be healthy. But you watch at times, and they're so trying to make this one work. I've seen couples like this that they won't be honest oh, that's about true. stuff with the couple they're with now because they're trying to protect themselves from more heartache yeah. and they want to keep the marriage together so they won't be real. They can't be as honest with each other as we are yet. And I watch it and sometimes it's painful to watch them as couples where it's, oh, honey, baby, uh, you know, he's so perfect and Jesse's like, I love him. He's the greatest man on the earth, but you know, sometimes he can be a pain in the rear. Well, there's another level of honesty. I think that well, protects each other. I think. Well, I think it's because there's not like a security in knowing that right. that person's going to stay, even if you're honest with them. But what you do by making people not like when you don't earn trust, you get yourself in a position where your person can't protect you from yourself and so trust in whatever you have to do to build trust it takes time it takes effort it takes regularity I mean it takes a lot of things but I think it's worth the time that you spend and I think it's really worth because what happens is people get so intricately involved in pleasing this one person and then loved ones and friends all around them that have loved them for years and years and years are getting no protection because they're not willing to say to the other one hey you can't treat these people like this you know we see it in stepchildren in the home we see it in stepchildren outside of the home grandchildren you know families because we handle these family situations all the time and people are telling us their deepest darkest thoughts about what's going on and one of the things I get more than anything especially from children of second and third fourth fifth marriages is man I just wish that there was honesty with the two of them so that we could all be happy and healthy together you know yeah, somebody's got to tell, um, somebody has to tell somebody the truth, yeah. right? It's got to be honest, it's got to be healthy. In a and, kind uh, way, like. Yeah, it's to, to speak the truth, the Christian deal is speak the truth in love, yes. right? So it's truthful, but it's loving, and uh, I think there's there's so much power in when uh, spouses, both a wife and a husband, can protect each other. I'll say this, the primary role of protector, uh, I believe it goes to the man. Right. Yeah. Then the woman is is obviously but a, a part of honoring your husband is protecting his reputation. Yeah, protecting his reputation. Says that you make well of them. that they can be spoken well of in the city gates. That's everything. A lot of people don't understand that that concept in the Bible. It'll talk about a man is respected in the gates 
or he has a voice in the gates. When it says he's respected in the gates or has a voice in the gates, what that means is that's like the place of political power, business power. That's right. The men would meet in the gates of the city, right? And uh, it's Big where, decisions were made there. It, well, it's where the buck stopped. It's yeah. where It's where all of the... Uh, yeah, the, the people that were making the, the big calls were making them. And so if a wife would protect and help add to that husband's name, the whole family name went up in the gates. Yeah. And when the husband went up, the wife went up. And it's just true in life. Whenever one of us gets elevated somewhere, we both get elevated. And the I mean, whole family flourishes from there. I mean, you're giving your children a, a great family name. You're giving your husband honor by you know, helping him to progress in that area or, you know, um, the husband to the wife, like everyone is called to push everyone forward by God. You know, I, I think about it in our role as pastors and everything's relational, you know, and there are times that Brian just gets really busy, distracted. He's not super good at it, whatever. And I've sent lots and lots and lots of gifts flowers, cards, notes, and sign Brian's name to them. And people come up to him and they're like, uh, thank you so much. And he's like, you are welcome. And he's like, did we do something for that person? You know? <laughs> and it's not that he doesn't want to, because in his mind he knew we should, but then practically it would have never happened. So there's this thing of like, we love these people enough to not expose our weakness or our busyness or our thing to them. They need to know that our family loves them more than just Brian loves them, our family, but your name is our family name. And so I think that's one of the powerful things about like taking the name and like it, be you belonging to, to, to each other and really like your identity lying in one another. I know that's not super uh, modern thought either. Listen, the but modern it, thoughts it are destroying matters. our culture. It, it matters, yeah, right? It matters. Uh, she talked about covering those things. The Bible says love covers a multitude of sins. Of sins. So maybe not even sin, like like where it's a broken weakness. wall before God. Yeah, a weakness. Forgetfulness. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, love covers that. And so Jesse will get somebody a great gift and gives the gift to them. And, of course, I never saw it or knew about <laughs> it. Or I don't have a clue. And they're like, Pastor, thank you so much for, for giving me this, this. I'm like, you know, when I saw it, I was thinking about you. <laughs> he a, tells them that every time. This is a great gift. And most they always know that I'm full yeah, of crap, that, too. And they that, start laughing. Well, but. even like our kids, he's like, whenever I saw that, I thought of you. And they're like, Dad, you didn't even know that you got it Dad, for me. Dad, you've never bought a gift yeah. for anybody except Mom. But, and now a lot great. of times Briley does that for me, our, our almost 17-year-old daughter. Yeah. Uh, but we love each other, we cover each other, and we protect each other. Yeah. Uh, I think my message to young men, right, and I think the Lord's message and the church's message to young men would be, listen, you're designed uh, to protect a people group. That's right. We're designed to protect our wives, protect our sons and our daughters, protect our children. Uh, I think that, that we're here to protect the church, Right, that there's a culture that needs a strong man to stand up and say, I understand that I'm here to stand between the wolf and the victim, and I'm not afraid to do that. Uh, man, you were roughed out for that reason. Yeah. And it's, it's a shame and it's sad that culture keeps effeminizing men, trying to take that rough edge off of the man that he's created by God to carry, so he's not afraid to get in there. Because listen, when you are a shield, here's what happens to a shield. Uh, a shield is going to catch arrows. It's going to be struck, right? Uh, a shepherd is the same thing, protects the sheep. What happens to the shepherd? Well, strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. It's true. That, that's what was prophesied about Jesus. You hit the head and everything else tears up. So as a shield, you're going to know you're, you're going to take some shots. But I'm telling you, the shots are worth it. Because what's behind the shield is beautiful and wonderful. Absolutely. And it will fulfill your life. And uh, if you don't protect that and you live... You're not protecting what you're supposed to. You might as well be dead because you're going to be miserable anyway. Yeah. And from a girl's perspective, let me just ask the guys. Just keep opening the doors. Keep saying, you know, the, the cordial things. Keep using the chivalry. Keep, uh, you know, doing, doing, you know, walking on uh, the outside of the street. Keep doing the things. And um, let, uh, let us see that because I think that I, as a, as a, female, as a Christian female that understands God's role for men and women, I appreciate it. But then even the girls that don't appreciate it, it still shows them that they're worth it. And so I think you're really like showing women the true heart of God for them, the love that he has for them. And it's not that they can't protect themselves, it's that they don't have 
to always protect themselves because God has strong men in the world that can do their job. And I think there's a part of that that releases anxiety and fear and, um, you know, a lot of like having to be so tough. And it reveals this moment in this woman that's tender that can open herself up and and women we bring this thing to the world that is a softness that the world needs they need a soft place to land and they need what we bring to the table even in our strength and and in our uh in our joy and in our you know lack of anxiety there's a peace and a joy that comes from women and a softness that and a beauty that enters the world that men just don't bring to it and so i think that if you'll just get keep giving it that you're really giving women the opportunity to maybe even see it for the first time and give her a hope for the future that God might bring a man into her world that would love her and her babies that much. Yeah. Well, we, we've got a book sitting right here. Uh, conveniently, I just found it right here at this micro, <laughs> microphone stand. It's amazing. Product uh, place. Jesse and I's first book we wrote, 23 years in writing. Uh, it's called Love Handles. You can get a copy. Uh, lovehandlesbook.com, lovehandlesbook.com. Uh, also, we have a chapter in here just on protection, how you protect one another. Come on, our spouse is worth protecting. Hey, get it, get the book, and uh, we'll be praying for your family. Hey, my name is Brian Gibson. My wife, Jesse and I are shooting this podcast together because we've been helping people in every area of their life for over 20 something years as pastors. And we want to do it on a daily basis and come to you live. Well, I will tell you this, there is nothing you can buy on my pillow that wouldn't be a great gift. If you're doing Mother's Day, Father's Day, birthdays, you've got an aunt that has a graduation this, <laughs> this uh, right now, any event is a great time for a my pillow product and I, I can't think of another business guy who's put his life uh his name his business on the line more than than mike lindell he's got pillows he's got sheets he's got slippers he's got america running through his blood you ought to support mike anyway i'm all for him make sure that you go to mypillow.com and use gibson podcast as your promo code to get your discount today and to support all that we're doing right here on our podcast well not only do i go to the grocery store and buy food for my family at double the rate that i used to but i i see inflation all around me with friends and co-workers that are consistently, you know, trying to find a way to save money, to, to find a new place to purchase this or to purchase that because everywhere you go, things are higher. Gas, milk, eggs, every single thing that you touch, um, the price is so much different than it was just even a, a little over a year ago. People ask me often about investments. Where would they put their money? Where would it be safe? Uh, I have bought some precious metals, uh, some gold, some silver, uh, mainly because I, I understand that these things are happening. And I know as long as I have that, right in the book of Genesis, it said that God put gold in, in, the, in the hills of Havilah and the gold of those hills was good. So I know that God calls gold good. I want to encourage you to go to bh-pm.com, bh-pm.com, schedule a consultation today and tell them that the Gibson sent you. Before we let you go today, I want to mention our new book, Love Handles. You are going to love this. Something to hold on to for your life. Listen, if you are in the best marriage ever, you need the book. If you are in a marriage that's totally jacked up, you need the book. Yes. If you have a niece, a nephew, a grandchild that's about to get married, they need the book. And if you've been married a thousand years, you need the book. And this is why we made it super easy to read. I'm getting like testimonials from all over the place, all over the country saying, we read it in one night. We read it while our kids were at soccer practice. We read it in one day. It changed our life. It's great. 10 chapters to change your marriage. And I'm just telling you, you need this in your life because everyone's marriage can use a little, uh, a little help. And some of our marriages can use a lot of help. So we want to make sure and get this in your hand. Lovehandlesbook.com. Lovehandlesbook.com. You can order it there. We would love for you to read it. Brian and I wrote it together from a male and female perspective, and it's going to change your life. Well, hey, I'm Pastor Brian Gibson. Thank you so much for listening to The Brian and Jesse Show. It's great to have you today. I'm Jesse, and we're so glad that you joined us. Don't miss the next one. We'll see you then.